Hey, what's going on YouTube? Uh, in this video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new AMD Ryzen specific memory kit from G-Skill. Uh, mine arrived a couple of days ago and it is the <coughs> G-Skill Flare X. This happens to be the 16 gigabyte kit. It's two times eight uh, X modules and it's rated at 3200 megahertz. Um, but if you look at the G-Skill press release website, which I'll link below, and I did show on my last video as well, but they actually have this memory running at 3467 with a 16 cast latency. And <clears throat> I did call G-Skill tech support. They were completely useless. I just wanted to find out, you know, what settings that they used in the BIOS because they validated and tested this memory kit on the ASUS Crosshair 6 motherboard, which I have, and I wanted to find out, you know, um, exactly what settings they used in terms of SOC voltage, um, RAM voltage, etc. And the guy couldn't tell me, so I had to figure it out on my own. But I was able to basically, um, you know, find out what those settings were, at least which ones worked for me in terms of voltages. Um, and other settings within the BIOS UEFI, which I will show you guys in detail. Um, but if you want to find out if this is the right memory for your Ryzen system, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you right now, it is. This is phenomenal, phenomenal memory. This is a Samsung VDI IC having kit of super high quality memory that G-Skill says has been specifically hand-picked uh, for maximum compatibility and overclocking capabilities for Ryzen uh, systems specifically. So if you're going to buy an R5 Ryzen chip or an R7 or an R3 and you want to get the maximum performance possible, um, I'll show you some numbers as well I got from Geekbench and memory throughput, uh, latency, overall system performance on anything that's relying you know that's not strictly relying on the CPU that's relying on the uh, memory bandwidth and, and latency as well a lot of applications do gaming in particular <clears throat> this is really 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 gonna help you out and if you have one of the four boards that I mentioned in my last video that does allow you to change the uh, BCLK or the base clock you can get this memory up really, really, really high, higher than I've ever gotten, even on any Intel system. My last Skylake uh, 6700K, I had running at almost you know, 5 gigahertz, had it up there at 5 gigahertz for benchmarking numerous times, and I never got the RAM over 3200 megahertz, even though it was a 3400 megahertz kit of G-Skill D-Die memory as well. High quality RAM in that system and um, that was my limit, my ceiling that I hit on that Intel system. So the memory bandwidth on my new Ryzen system is even better than it is on, you know, a, a Kaby Lake or a Skylake system um, running, running in dual channel mode, um, you know, that I was able to achieve personally. So again, um, this is highly compatible. There is also another series from G-Skill out right now called Fortis which doesn't clock as high as the Flare X memory, but it is more affordable. It goes up to like 2400 megahertz, um, but it is a lower voltage, it's 1.2 volts as opposed to the 1.35 volts that this memory will run at, at least at stock speeds of 3200 megahertz. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead, and go ahead and show you guys my exact configuration in the ASUS Crosshair uh, 6 Hero Motherboard BIOS UEFI show you how I got this memory up to 3467 and I'm going to show you some results um, you know using Geekbench to show you the differences between running a memory kit such as this with a higher frequency how that affects system performance at least relative to the gamut of tests that Geekbench runs through uh, to get its numbers and uh, yeah I mean Spoiler alert, this is awesome memory. If you're looking for a, a kit to buy again for your Ryzen system, go ahead and buy it. If you want to stick around to see the numbers, stick around. If not, go grab this online. Uh, this kit is the shit. At least we got Ryzen. So check out these numbers, guys, and uh, I'll see you in a minute. You can see here, uh, CPU I have running comfortably at 3900 megahertz uh, and the RAM running at 3467 just as they have done on their website. So just wanted to show you guys how I actually came to these numbers 
and this is a completely stable overclock for my particular chip, um, my particular board, and my particular RAM, obviously. So your results may vary, but uh, I just wanted to at least show you guys how I came about getting full system stability uh, and good temperatures, etc., using these settings. So uh, if you look down uh, in the extreme tweaker section, you can see that I'm actually using a base clock, and this is what I was telling you guys before. There's only the four boards that you can actually change the BCLK frequency or the base clock frequency on, um, this being one of them. Obviously, the other three I mentioned in the, in the previous video, so look at that for reference, but uh, I believe it's the uh, Acer Rock, uh, Tachi, and Gaming. Uh, Gigabyte has a gaming board as well, all X370 chipsets. You can change this BCLK uh, on, which allows you to get these higher RAM frequencies. So I can even go up to 3782, um, but to be honest with you guys, I think I got it up to like 3490 was the highest I was able to get this where I was comfortable with the voltages, etc. Um, and 3900 megahertz um, on my particular Ryzen CPU is comfortable temperature wise and voltage wise, at least what I'm comfortable putting it at. I did get this system up and benchmarking at 4.1 gigahertz, uh, but at obviously, you know, a higher, higher core voltage, 1.46, Five, I believe it was um, with some pretty aggressive settings as well maxed out in the uh, Digi Plus power control right now I do give this plenty of leeway I have it at level 4 out of 5 as far as the load line calibration is concerned uh, current capability I have at 130 so this chip can pull more than the 1.4 25 volts I believe I have it set at yeah uh, but rarely does it do that and I've only seen it go up as high as 1.439 volts that's under max load on all CPU cores and threads the CPU um, is totally stable doesn't go over 68 degrees and that's being stress tested for long periods of time and it's uh, again like I say stability is important for me so this is where my chip is kind of happy and I'm happy not pushing it you know too much further for day-to-day -day use so uh, SOC, SOC voltage I have set manually to 1.2 volts which is currently what ASUS recommends as the maximum Tiny Tom Logan over at OC3D did give me a heads up on this I first saw this kind of tip from him and it does kind of hover a little bit lower than that typically um, but not by much. This is just kind of a, a set SOC voltage, so you don't have to do much in terms of enabling, you know, extra juice uh, using the Digi Plus power control for the SOC. The DRAM, uh, DRAM voltage, the RAM voltage basically, this is a 1.35 volt kit. Um, at 3200 megahertz, that works just fine and dandy. But pushing the overclock on the RAM as well to 3467, I've gone ahead and upped the voltage here to 1.4, and uh, that works out just fine in terms of stability for the RAM. So I just want to show you guys a few other things I've done here. RAM timing controls. I've gone ahead and set these uh, you know, manually to 16 and uh, 18 and 36 respectively which I will show you guys some screenshots uh, in CPU Z so you can see those how they how they come, kind of correlate in Windows and then really the only other changes uh, are in this Digi Plus power control again load line calibration uh, current for the CPU uh, I have not changed the VRM switching frequency I have disabled the VRM sped, uh, spread spectrum which you can see, it does tell you go ahead and disable this when overclocking, so uh, I did go ahead and do that. CPU power duty control is on extreme, um, you know, phase is on full phase mode, extreme mode as well. I have not messed with the thermal controls. If your CPU um, is getting this hot, 
it's gonna it's gonna melt <laughs> right through the core of the earth more than likely anyway so I don't recommend you know pushing these things I don't even know what a safe temperature for Ryzen is but you know mine doesn't go over 68 degrees under full load I have very good cooling so um, you know I certainly wouldn't uh, you know tickle this at all if anything it shouldn't shouldn't even be this high that's absurd the SOC load line calibration um, 1.2 volts is what it's currently at and only having it at a modest level 2 if it needs any kind of a boost it can go slightly over that um, to 120 percent and um, you know I haven't messed with the switching frequency at all uh, the phase control is on full I don't have any kind of direct contact cooling other than what's on the, um, the motherboard that it comes with in terms of heat sinks which is a pretty robust you know cooling solution this is a, a very you know pricey board it's a high-end board so it's made for these extreme over, over, you know overclocking environments like what I have and I have extremely good case airflow so you might want to be just cognizant and kind of keep an eye on your SOC voltages uh, and see how that kind of affects your temperatures. You know, you don't want those going too high. Again, um, you know, I would say something in the in the low to mid 40s is acceptable for SOC. Um, but you know, if you start getting up there to 50, I would I would turn these back down and back down on either your um, you know CPU current, uh, CPU frequency. RAM, frequency, whatever it takes uh, to get system stability without having to use uh, a higher voltage on your SOC or enable any of these, you know, additional kind of uh, additional leeway for the system to, to use more electricity when needed to maintain stability for the SOC. So, um, you know, the DRAM, again, the boot voltage I have set uh, just like I have set uh, as a standard setting for 1.4 volts. So it, go, it, it boots up at 1.4. This can kind of throw you off sometimes. If uh, you have the DRAM you know, uh, voltage set for 1.35 or 1.4, whatever it requires for you to maintain stability in Windows, that's fine. But if the system boots up and automatically only designates you know, 1.2 volts, which is standard for some DDR4 kits, or 1.35 volts, that's not quite enough juice to receive uh, well, well, for your RAM to, to take in and boot at those higher overclocks that you're asking of it, this is a good place to go in there and set that manually. So as soon as your system boots up, it's going to receive, you know, what you have it set for right off the bat, and you're going to get a post, uh, and it's going to go ahead and boot into Windows for you, at least ideally speaking. So um, those are the settings that I have gone ahead and used to get, again, it's a stable 3.9 gigahertz overclock on my 1700 uh, non-X variant. And uh, base multiplier played a big role in this. You know, I've, I've played with this quite a bit. I've had it around 108, I've had it around 124 and some different settings used uh, to get you know, up to four gigahertz and 4.1 gigahertz, etc. But this really seems to be a really good mix of memory frequency, as well as CPU frequency.
So the moral of the story here is, is if you're going to buy and invest, especially in a higher end, um, you know, AMD R7 8 core 16 thread CPU with a high end motherboard that does have one of those, um, you know, external clock generators that allows you to change the base clock and frequency, such as the ASUS Crosshair uh, Hero 6, the uh, Acer Rock, uh, you know, Taiachi or however they call it, uh, gaming, uh, Edition or the Gigabyte Gaming K7, I believe it is. All four of those boards are pretty pretty pricey, and the CPUs are not cheap either. So you might as well go ahead and spend an extra few bucks on your uh, on your RAM. And this kit is highly recommended. It is tested for maximum compatibility for Ryzen and AM4 sockets specifically, and it lives up to that name. So I give it two thumbs up. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the information. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And I appreciate you guys tuning in as always. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.